My today talk is uh, going back to last year when I was uh, trying to understand uh, is my uh, remote target a honeypot or uh, it is a real ISIS device. So uh, it leads to some research and final, finally I put them all uh, in a framework. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mohamed Reza Zamiri. I'm currently working uh, as a security researcher uh, at DZ Research. And before that, uh, I was a, a CSRT engineer at uh, Iranian Central Bank. You can follow me at Twitter or visit my website, scalapod.com. So, first, I'm going to talk about honeypots and ISIS honeypot, and uh, second, uh, fingerprinting methods, and then uh, I'll talk about our framework. And after that, I will show you how uh, I use the framework to uh, fingerprint uh, an ISIS honeypot called GasPot, and finally, conclusion. <coughs> so, um, honeypots, uh, are well-known tools for uh, trapping hackers and detecting uh, uh, sophisticated sometimes uh, attacks. And they may contain some vulnerabilities or not. And they are generally uh, separated in two categories. Uh, high interaction honeypots, that are some uh, operating systems with uh, powerful logging options. And low interaction honeypots, uh, that are computer softwares uh, installed on the operating systems. As you may aware, uh, ICS devices uh, are for controlling industrial processes. Uh, at the first, they were uh, isolated from the outside world. But today, uh, with advancement in information technology, uh, they are connecting to internet more than ever. So their operators are able to uh, work with them from the remote. So the attackers are uh, able to work with them from the remote too. So here comes the ISIS honeypots. Uh, ISIS honeypots are kind of honeypots that are trying to simulate um, industrial protocols uh, they can be a good resource of some uh, attacks uh, against ICS. They are good um, to trapping mid-range attackers or finding mass scan and mass attacks, but uh, they are not so good at uh, uh, trapping advanced attackers or uh, detecting uh, major cyber threats. So why fingerprinting of uh, a honeypot is important? Uh, it is predictable that uh, attackers will try to bypass the honeypots. And so it's a good idea after setting up a honeypot, try to test it against uh, fingerprinting. Also, there's another point here. Uh, today we have many security companies that uh, are providing uh, commercial uh, threat intelligence services. So a part of uh, this data is coming from uh, open resources from the internet, but an important part uh, is collected from uh, their own uh, sensors and honeypots. So the accuracy of the data can make difference between uh, security companies. So. It is clear that uh, if uh, threat intelligence data comes from a honeypot that, is, uh, that can be easily detected, uh, it's not reliable at all. So, in recent years, uh, we saw some uh, malware attacks against the ICS devices, but uh, uh, remote network attacks are still popular. Uh, these kind of attacks are uh, 
uh, they can be uh, active or passive. For, ad, for active, uh, the, uh, the attackers are trying to uh, scanning the IP range and filtering the ICS related ports by using tools such as Nmap or mass scan. And for um, passive scanning, they can use Google hacking or visiting some website like Shonen and Sense. So after uh, the attackers are uh, finding uh, such systems, they try to run uh, some attacks such as uh, broad force, denial of service, or uh, sending uh, um, spoofed packets, or even uh, using custom exploits. So, at next slide, I'm talking about how we can fingerprint the honeypots. The most common uh, technique that uh, can be used for uh, fingerprinting honeypots is uh, looking for some uh, default options, some default values. Uh, they can be easily detected by looking at uh, network service banners or values or such things. Second, uh, as I said before, honeypots are running on the operating system. So it is not hard to understand is a remote, uh, what is the operating system of a remote machine. Um, for example, you can just uh, do a simple uh, port scanning, and in the case of uh, honeypots, you can see there are some open ports that aren't related to any ICS protocol. Or in the case of high interaction honeypots, uh, you can see some restrictions in network communications. For example, you can send uh, many data to outside. Or there are some other methods, uh, for example, uh, the ICMP echo response time of a real operating system is different from an uh, operating system on a hypervisor, for example, uh, VMware. So, many honeypots are implementing industrial protocols. But sometimes, or better saying many times, uh, this uh, protocol, this simulated protocols have not all of the future of uh, the original ones. So, and that's the point. Uh, because of, because um, many industrial protocols doesn't support any security mechanisms such as encryption or even authentication, a user is able to interact more with uh, an industrial protocol and investigate uh, suspicious cases. So, the last method is looking for unusual uh, ISIS behaviors. So, what I mean by saying this? Uh, many honeypots are implementing industrial protocols, but they are not successful uh, in in implementing their uh, logical behavior. Imagine uh, you are connecting a temperature sensor to a PLC and monitoring its value on an HMI panel. Uh, you can see a dynamic value that is uh, going to change every second or minutes. So what if you are facing with a protocol that only holds some fixed numbers? So it is clear that it's, uh, it can be a kind of, uh, it's a sign of a honeypot. So, um, there, there is not too many of uh, ISIS honeypots. Uh, the most famous one is Compot that supports uh, a good range of uh, industrial protocols such as IEC, S7, or Modbus. And uh, there is um, some specific kinds, for example, gas pot that is uh, for simulating uh, automated tank gauges, that many of them are located in the US. So, for the f first example of showing how we can detect the noises honeypot, 
I'm, uh, chose, uh, I chose a uh, compact. Uh, previously, some researchers are uh, uh, pro provided some default signatures of uh, COMPOT. But if you look uh, carefully at uh, the COMPOT configuration files, you can find a new method and new uh, signatures. Uh, there are some uh, uh, less known uh, signatures that I found by investigating in uh, COMPAT uh, configuration file. Uh, this is a uh, this is screenshot is from Shodan. Uh, Shodan has a feature called Honey Score, and if it will be able to find the honey pods, uh, it will show here a tag that called Honey Pot, and as uh, you can know. Uh, now, uh, this Shodan says it is an industrial contest system. Okay, so let's look more carefully. The picture above is uh, from a Shodan configuration file. And if you look at the response file, you can see uh, that's the same. So we can know that it's not an industrial control system and it is a honeypot. So, for uh, an example of uh, operating system detection, as I said, it is not uh, very hard. Uh, this is an example of uh, scanning a remote COM pod, uh, just by port scanning, uh, even there isn't any option for OS detection with dash O switch. And you can see that we have some uh, uh, Open ports for industrial control system, such as S7 and Modbus, but the other ports aren't related to uh, mm, industrial system. So that is a Linux system, not a, a PLC device. So, and for uh, this is another example of finding by checking for uh, incomplete protocol implementation. Sometimes it is uh, much easier. For example, there are some tools that are designed for uh, scanning industrial control systems. They can communicate with industrial protocols. But because uh, many times industrial protocols are uh, implemented incompletely in the honeypots, uh, the result is like this. Here is another example of a sky the honey net. Uh, by digital bonds, and you can see it again. This is uh, the gas pot. Uh, uh, there are many commands by TLS protocol that, uh, but only gas pot only support five uh, uh, ATG display format commands. So, uh, if you look, any, if you send any other command, it will uh, respond you with a hard-coded value like this. So, uh, for detecting unusual ISIS behaviors, uh, it is enough to monitor the protocol and uh, look uh, its behaviors. This is example is uh, from Gaspot. Uh, this is a command called i2100, and if you send this command, it will respond you with uh, such a data. And 13 hours uh, later, uh, I sent another uh, request, and it's, uh, the, there is a, the result. Uh, you can see uh, there aren't any change uh, in the values, and it is uh, some fixed numbers. So, uh, finally, I put, put them uh, in a framework. Uh, for a scanning, uh, uh, I used the uh, mass scan, that is a uh, tool for scanning a, a big range of uh, IPs uh, in a short time. Uh, so, we, f uh, we filter uh, the ICS related ports and uh, these tools can uh, show us what uh, IPs uh, have these uh, open ports. So after that, uh, 
uh, I send them to the framework, and the framework uh, make decision uh, uh, about uh, is it a honeypot or not. So how the framework works? Uh, the project uh, uh, is accessible on the GitHub, and uh, it is now customized for detecting gas spots. Uh, because OS detection is time consuming many times, uh, we first check the three other methods, and if we give a, at least one positive answer, we send it, uh, this IP for OS detection, and after that, we have uh, the four methods, and the framework will show, uh, is, it, is it a honeypot or ISIS? So, for customizing, uh, it's for uh, detecting gas spot. For default configuration check, uh, there is a configuration file uh, of gas spot uh, available on its GitHub. Mm, there are some uh, station names and product names. Uh, we use that. For incomplete uh, protocol implement implementation, uh, there is a command I3100 that is not supported by uh, GasPod. And as you said, as you saw before, uh, um, if you send two requests to the GasPod, it will uh, re uh, respond you the same. And there is a little change, and this uh, change measurement is uh, the same for all of gas spots, uh, uh, and it's about uh, 10 percentage by percentage uh, if you uh, measure it. So after that, uh, we use the Nmap with uh, OS detection for detect uh, what uh, kind of operating system is here. So. Here is the result of some uh, detected gas spots. If you look at the change percentage, percentage of the two response, it is the same and a fixed number for all of them. And uh, default configuration and uh, I says, uh, and the trap, and all of them are running on an operating system. These results are from real uh, ATG devices uh, that, were, that has at least uh, one uh, positive answer. But you can see that uh, another method show that this is not a honeypot. And here is our final result. Uh, about uh, at the final, uh, we found uh, about 17 gas pots. But uh, if uh, at, this is for uh, the same time we have checked it uh, by our framework, and the showdown only uh, shows nine uh, gas spots. So, uh, as cyber attacks are getting uh, more advanced uh, in the ICS. Uh, it is clear that we need uh, more advanced honeypots. Um, for making a reliable honeypot, uh, um, it is good for looking at our um, four methods. Uh, the two first methods are easy for addressing, but uh, another two methods uh, need some more research uh, and an advanced development. Okay, thank you everyone for watching.